In every century, there came a bigot who could not tolerate any belief other than his own. If we are to believe some Buddhist sources, Shashank, the king of Gaud, was one such bigot. He is accused of destroying the Bodhi tree and several other sites which the followers of Buddha considered sacred. In this video, we will try to find out whether Shashank was really an enemy of Buddhism or not. As we know in history, sources represents what their author wishes to convey. So in order to find out the truth, we have to look at the sources that talk about Shashank's alleged persecution of Buddhism. And primarily, we find that we have two such sources. The first are the accounts of Zhuangzhang, who traveled to India around the middle of 7th century AD. Then we have a Buddhist text called Arya Manjushri Mulkalb, which was authored around 8th century AD. Of these two texts, it is the account of Zhuangzhang which has most of the information. Zhuangzhang mentions five references that connect Shashank with the acts of oppression against Buddhism. Of these five references, first comes when Harsha is about to be coronated. Here, Bodhisattva Avilokiteshwara advises Harsha to raise Buddhism from the ruin into which it had been brought by the king of Karn Suvarna. As we know, Karn Suvarna was the capital of Shashank. So here, Bodhisattva Avilokiteshwara is talking about Shashank. The second reference in Zhuangzhang's account is somewhat similar. But in the third reference, we find a detailed account of Shashank's persecution. Here we are told that Shashank destroyed a stone which had Buddha's foot impression. Describing this event, Zhuangzhang writes, Lately, Shashank Raja, when he was overthrowing and destroying the law of Buddha, forthwith came to the place where that stone is, for the purpose of destroying the sacred marks. Having broken it into pieces, it came whole again, and the ornamental figures as before. Then he flung it into the river Gang but it came back to its old place. After describing this event, Zhuangzhang goes on to tell us how Shashank destroyed the sacred Bodhi tree under whose shade Gautam Buddha attained enlightenment. He writes, and I quote, In late times, Shashank Raja, being a believer in heresy, slandered the religion of Buddha and, through envy, destroyed the convents and cut down the Bodhi tree, digging it up to the very springs of the earth. But yet, he did not get to the bottom of the roots. Then he burnt it with fire and sprinkled it with the juice of sugarcane, desiring to destroy it entirely and not leave a trace of it behind. When Zhuangzhang visited the Bodhi tree in around 637-638 AD, it had regrown because of the efforts of Poonvarman the king of Magad. Zhuangzhang describes how Poonvarman had bathed the roots of the Bodhi tree with the milk of thousand cows. The result of Poonvarman's labor was that the Bodhi tree again revived and it grew to a height of some 10 feet. Now, in the Gaya region, this was not the only act of oppression which Shashank did. If we are to believe Zhuangzhang, after destroying the Bodhi tree, Shashank then proceeded to a nearby Vihar which housed an excellent image of the Buddha. Zhuangzhang tells us that Shashank Raja, having cut down the Bodhi tree, wished to destroy this image. But having seen its loving features, his mind had no rest or determination. And he returned with his written new homewards. On his way, he said to one of his officers, we must remove that statue of Buddha and place there a figure of Maheshwara. In this passage, Zhuangzhang tells us that the officer who was tasked to destroy this image was a devotee of Buddha. So what he did was that he did not destroy the image, he just built a wall around the image. Although this officer has not carried out the task which Shashank had given him, he nonetheless reported to Shashank that he had destroyed this image. On hearing that his orders were carried out, Zhuangzhang tells us that Shashank was seized with terror. His body produced sores and his flesh rotted off. And after a short while, he died. This account of Shashank's death is also mentioned in another account, which is Arya Manjushri Mulkalp. And the way Shashank is dying in these two sources is similar to how in Buddhist writing, we are told that another enemy of Buddhism, 
Pushyamitra Shunga died. Now the fact that Shashank died the same way as Pushyamitra Shunga died suggests that most likely Shashank did not die the way Zhuangzhang and R. A. Manjushri Mulkalp would have us believe. Apart from describing the death of Shashank, R. A. Manjushri Mulkalp describes Shashank as destroyer of the beautiful image of Buddha and one who destroyed Chaityas and monastery. But in R. A. Manjushri Mulkalp, the details that are mentioned in Zhuangzhang's account is absent. So these are the evidence which we have in front of us. Now the question comes how historians have interpreted this evidence. One of the great historians of ancient India, R. C. Majumdar, while analyzing these sources argues these and other stories of persecution of Buddhism by Shashank cannot be accepted as true without independent testimony. Besides, the flourishing condition of Buddhism in the capital city of Shashank, as described by Huen Sang, is hardly compatible with the view that he was a religious bigot and a cruel persecutor of Buddhism. But according to historian D. Dev Huti, the records of Zhuangzhang have certain truths behind them. And in her view, these references of Zhuangzhang are one of the rare examples of religious intolerance in ancient India. Now, what do you think about these accounts? Do let us know in the comments. And if you want to know about who Shashank is, do watch this video where I have talked about how Shashank became the king of Bengal. Thank you for watching.